How are we doing, guys? And welcome back to All These To Be. It's Oscar from All These To Be, and this is a bit of a different video. We are into the international break, the dreaded international break, guys. Um, and some bad news to start off with. Well, possible bad news. Let's just echo that. Possible bad news to start off with. This is exclusive from Phil Hay. Jorginho Rutter has withdrawn from France's under-21 squad to undergo minor hernia surgery. Problem has been troubling, pr troubling him recently. Leeds say he could be fit to play in around 10 days, so could be available for Watford away on Good Friday. This isn't great. It's not great stuff to hear. Of course, there's a few key words in this. Minor hern hernia surgery should be fit to play in around 10 days and could be available for Watford. So this video is very much theoreticals, but as it is with Leeds injury scenarios, we have to look at the worst case scenario. And of course, even if Rutter is back fully fit in time for Easter, we've got two games in three days. Is it realistic GG will be fit enough to play a full 90 minutes in both games? I'm not sure, but I'm going to do this video on the basis that GG isn't fit, isn't fit. Potential options to replace Jorginho Rutter in that 10 role. Hopefully, you know, listen, we've heard this before with Pascal, um, but let's be hopeful. Let's be hopeful that GG is back as soon as possible. So, of course, people in the comments will say, oh, you're panicking too much, Yoski. You're panicking, you're panicking, you're panicking. But let's just look at the op options. It's not just is Rutter out these next two games. It's just in general, you know, who goes in if GG Rutter misses games for these this season. So, let's look at it because we have to rotate as well. Let's not forget, it's eight games in the space of pretty much a month and a bit. Well, a, a five weeks, basically. Eight games in five weeks. We will need to rotate at times. So what are the possible options in that 10 role if Georgina Rutter is out? I'll emphasise again, if. So don't start me in the comments, please. <laughs> um, right, so let's go through. There's four different options the way I see it. Okay, let's go with the most likely choice. Not necessarily my choice, but the choice I think Daniel Farker will go with should Georgina Rutter not be fit enough for the Watford or Hull games. I think the most likely choice, and I can see the comments coming in already, Joel Perot, I think, is most likely to go into that spot. I think we've seen that this season when Rutter has been missing, and obviously Joel Perot had that spell in the 10 roll in the first bit of the season. It feels to me like Daniel Farker, that's his second choice in that number 10 role. Of course, what Rutt what Perot offers is totally different to Rutter. He's a to I mean, the total opposite in, in terms of players and in, in, in the sense of how they play the game. Joel Perot is more about off-the-ball movement, getting into the box late and scoring goals. Not necessarily for a creative threat, but for a goal-scoring threat. That is what Joel Perot should offer, in theory, in the way he plays. Listen, Joel Perot's form the last couple of months has not been good enough. There's no getting away from that. But it does feel to me like Daniel Farker sees Joel Perot as a 10 rather than a 9. I, I, I think if there is an opportunity to bring Perot into the team, it will be in that 10 role. And the opportunity might come up now with Juju Rutter's potential injury for this next game. Perot on form can offer us something in that 10 role, especially against Watford. You know, listen, Watford have changed manager. It's difficult to get an exact read of how Watford will play against us. But if Watford do set up like they did at Birmingham, sit deep and allow us to have a lot of the ball, certainly like they did in the first bit of the season, Perot might suit this game really well. Those late runs into the box, that goal threat in the box against a deep line defence, Perot was good at that in the first bit of the season. That was his best games came in those moments where he was kind of that third man in the box, that untracked runner into the box. Because you know, we know Watford's focus in the box will be on Patrick Bamford. Could that then lend into you know Joel Perot potentially being a big goal threat in the game against Watford? But either way, I do think it will be the option Daniel Farker goes with. He does seem to trust Joel Perot in the 10 role when Russ is not available. He has done it in the cup games as well um, with Joel Perot playing in that spot. Listen, when it comes to ball retention, carrying the ball, pressing, Joel Perot isn't offering enough in that respect. I don't think anyone could get away from that. I'm not saying as a player he doesn't offer enough, but on current form, he's not offering enough. But I do think he's a choice Daniel Farker will go with. We've seen it before with Daniel Farker. He very much believes in playing players into form. We've seen that with Wilfred Nonto. You know, persisted with Wilfred Nonto, even though you know he was a little bit off form in the first bit of the season. He persisted. Uh, with Dan James right at the start of the season when he had a you know a quiet like first couple of games and obviously didn't have the greatest of moment momentum coming into the season. And of course we've seen it with you know other players as well, you know, um Eli Gruev, you know, randomly coming in and then just keeping his place. 
will he try and do the same with Perot? It's worked with other players. Can it work with Perot? I think that's the choice Daniel Farker will go with. I might be wrong, but we'll see. Okay, let's go on to the next option on here, which is the potential choice. Now, at the start of the season, cash your mind back. I know a lot of people won't want to cast their minds back, and that's rightly so. Cast your mind back to the first part of the season, the first four or five games, when Crescentio Somerville was playing in the 10 role. Is Crescentio Somerville now a potential choice? Now, I don't buy into the theory that Crescentio Somerville is way off it at all, to be honest with you. I don't, I, listen, I don't think Crescentio Somerville is playing to the same level he has for most of the season in the last couple of weeks, but I don't think he's off it by any stretch. I still think he's a massive threat whenever he's on the pitch, even if he's not necessarily getting the goals and assists to the same rate as what he was at the first bit of the season. And I think his form in that kind of regard will come back pretty quickly. I have no sort of question of that at all with Crescentio Somerville. But is this an opportunity, obviously with the form of Wilfred Nonto, the impacts of Dan James off the bench to play Nonto on one side, Dan James on the other side, and Crescentio Somerville through the middle. Is that an option? We saw it in the first part of the season, Crescentio Somerville delivering a man-of-the-match performance against Cardiff at home. In fact, the performance that kind of got us back into that game. Is this an option? Is this an option for Leeds? I think in terms of the way Crescentio Somerville plays, I think it can work quite well. You know, the fact that he is a threat through the middle, I think he's of equal threat. Well, maybe not equal threat, but he can operate down the right-hand side. He can link up down that right-hand side and make runs down that right-hand side if needed. And of course, we know how good he is down that left-hand side. In that 10 role, effectively, he's in a free role. We can just play the game as he sees it, like Gigi Rutter does. Yeah, we can drift on that right-hand side when he needs to, drift onto his favourite position on the left and link up with Nonto or Dan James. It can work for us on that side of the pitch. But it's not the choice I'm going to go with. I don't think it's the best option for us. As good as Chris Ames Somerville is, and as great as I think he can be in that position, I still want Crescentia Somerville on that left-hand side because my personal choice is who I believe the most natural choice is, and I've already mentioned him, Wilfred Nonto. Now, last season, we saw Nonto play some games in that 10 role. For me, Nonto is my choice. There's a couple of reasons for this, and let us know in the comments who your choice is to potentially replace Gigi Russer if needed. Look at the goal. Nonto scored against Millwall. Cutting in on, on the right, onto his left foot. Look at the goals he scored this season. A lot of them have come from central areas. Despite him being on that right hand side, when he drifts inside, he is such a big threat in this Leeds team. You know, the power he generates on the shots on his right, the power he generates on the shot on his left, he's a threat on both sides. And that's what I think is so key for a 10 in this Leeds team. We've seen it with Rutter, but we've not seen it with Perot. And that's why we've seen a differential in performances in that 10 spot. Nonto, for me, feels like the most natural choice. He can carry the ball. He's a good presser of the ball. I think that's improving all the time. Nonto's pressing of the ball and he can hit the ball well on both feet. And of course, can link up down the sides, like I've already mentioned with, with Crescentio Somerville. And we've seen him do this last season. You know, when he first came into the Leeds team, he kind of was operating in that 10 role from time to time. And the other reason I'd go with this is that it's a choice that moves players around the least, if that makes sense, because you can still have Somerville on the left. Dan James is being played pretty much 90, 95% of this football this season on the right-hand side. There's a chance to get James on the right, Somerville on his left, and Nonto through the middle. And of course, Patrick Bamford up top. That means you're not changing around too much. You're not changing the dynamics around too much. I'm not a fan of changing the winning team at this moment in the season. And I do think that's a choice that presents that option the best. We know how big a goal threat James and Somerville are down the sides. Nonto, when he gets into those central areas, that feels like the most natural choice to me. The form Nonto's on as well. I do like that dynamic potentially with Nonto just behind Bamford. And we saw it at Swansea. You know, Nonto had to go in in the 10 from time to time in that game um, when, when Perot was up top. We've seen how well Nonto can link up with his centre forward. And with Patrick Bamford on the form he's on, I really like that option. Let us know, guys. Let, me, let us know if I'm talking rubbish. But I do feel he's the most natural choice. And for me, on form, Nonto is my choice to go in that 10 role if Jorginho Rutter is out or needs a rest um, after this surgery. And the fourth choice, again, the wild card choice, if you like. This is by far my least preferable out of the, out of the options, but it's just one I'm just going to throw out there. 
is Scott going to get a great reception this one? Archie great. Okay. Wild cards option. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to do this. I'm not saying do this at this stage of the season. The, the situation we're in, it's just a wild card choice. Archie Gray, for me, as great as he's been at right back, as great as he's been deeper in midfield, I think, for me, is better further up the pitch. I think his peak, I, it's hard to say. Maybe peak's the wrong word for it. I do just think Archie Gray, I, I think I may have gone a little bit overboard there. I do just think Archie Gray's potential Higher up the pitch is there for all to see. He can retain possession. He can carry the ball. He can keep the ball in tight areas. We know how... I think that's probably the biggest reason for me is he can keep the ball in tight areas. We know how good Jorginho Rutter is in terms of getting himself out of tight areas. We know how often that kind of presents itself in that 10 role. Archie Gray feels the most natural of the other four options at doing that. I also think he does carry a goal for it. You know, we've seen it not so much in the senior team, but we've seen it for Archie Gray in the past, for England and Leeds, you know, obviously coming through the academy, he has got a goal threat, creative threat as well. He can strike through the ball really well. It's an option. It's not the option I'm going with. And people don't hammer me in the comments, please. It's not the option I'm going with. It's just a wild card option. But I do think the other three options are the most obvious ones. But it's a wild card option. It's more of a futuristic option, if you will. But for me, I'm going to go with Wilfred Nonto. But Archie Gray, I'm just going to throw out there, potentially in the future, could play in the 10 role or more advanced. I do think he can play that spot. Let us know in the comments. Am I talking rubbish? Do you agree with that? But do smash the like button, please, guys. Hit that subscribe button as well. We've hit the magic 30,000, of course. And we've hit the magic 30,500 as well. Thank you so much for your fantastic support. If you haven't done already, check out Tash's vlog on the Millwall game. Absolutely fantastic. Absolute belter, as always. An absolute banger. And Tash and Jack's post-match reaction to the Millwall game as well. And let us know what international break content you want from the channel over the next weeks or so. I could not wait for football to be back already. We're only Tuesday into Tuesday of the first week, uh, the first week into, 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 into the international break, if I can get my words out. And I'm already bored of it. Um, but yeah, guys, let us know your thoughts on this one. I think it's Wilfred Nonto. I think it's Wilfred Nonto for me who should be there. I do think it'll be Perot's preferred. But we'll see. Let us know in the comments, guys, who is your preferred options. And we will leave it there, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And we will 